Hello, welcome to the Happy Doodle YouTube channel. This is Lauren Taylor, and I'm really excited to share with you the coffee cup shaker dies that were just recently released from Heffy Doodle. Here I have them all separated and onto a magnetic sheet that I keep in my little crafty stash, and I'm just gonna walk through some of the dies. So, or, well, all of the dies. So the first one I'm doing is the large coffee cup, which gives you the cup and lid. There is also this smaller cup shape piece, which you could cut for a cup on its own or use it to create a shaker window out of the larger coffee cup die cut. So here you can see those pieces separated. And because it is cut out of the larger coffee cup, you can layer it, like I said, to create a fun little coffee shaker. Um, so it's one way you can definitely use these dies. Some other products are this fun little coffee sleeve die with an adorable stitch design on all four sides of this uh, coffee sleeve. And then you have this optional piece that you could die cut inside of it that is perfect for sliding in maybe a gift voucher for a favorite coffee or tea shop, or maybe you just want to put a few little dollars in there. Um, anything you could get to trim and fit inside that as well. Um, but I think it's perfect perfect for a gift card to a coffee shop. The lid is also a separate die cut, which is really great if you want to glue on a different color lid, especially if you're doing patterned paper for your die cutting. And then there's also a curved piece with a fun dash line that will make the edge of the lid as well or the edge of the cup. So you can also trim off that top part of the lid and you could put that um, to be kind of like the edge of a cup. You know, some cups might have a different color on the part where you would sip out of the cup. So that's an option as well. Of course, we have our tea bag. So we have the die cut that makes the string and a die cut for the tag of the tea. So you could glue those together and place your tea string so it's just about to go um, where the lid is and then adhere the lid on top and it looks like your little tea bag is tucked inside of your cup. Another way you could use this as a shaker is to use some of the dies that are in the set. So there is a set of two circles, which could make really cute little boba um, tapioca balls for inside of a shaker card. There's also a small heart and a large heart, which are perfect for shakers. And one of my favorite die cuts is this adorable ice cube or maybe a sugar cube, depending on how you'd like to use it for your shaker. There are also two pieces to create a straw. So there is one rectangle, which you could just easily use by itself for a straw. And I've also die cut two of these other pieces out of purple. So you can see how you can add some fun stripes to your straw as well. A great way to add in color to your coffee cup. So those are all of the dies that come in the set. I do have an example already made that I'd like to show you where I trimmed off the top of the coffee cup. And here you can see here I made a little boba tea and I use those little circles in brown to create little boba inside of my shaker card. But let's make a fun shaker card together here today. So I have two pieces of cardstock that I use the largest of the Stitch Imperial rectangles to cut out so they are A2 in size and I'm going to die cut the large coffee cup out of one of those pieces of paper and I'm just going to save that coffee cup for a future project. I did use my Heffy tape to help me keep that nice and centered and I'm going to use those pieces a little later. So now I'm going to go through my Distress Oxides and pick some that I think match the Pumpkin Spice Sparkle Mix really well. So I have Wild Honey, Carved Pumpkin, and Vintage Photo. And I'm just going to grab a mat here to help me keep my paper and stencil in place while I do some distressing. So, well, the stencil comes in a minute. First, I'm starting with Wild Honey, and I'm going to blend that onto the top two-thirds of my card. And then I'm going to grab that Carved Pumpkin and fill up the bottom third, and then go about halfway up to blend in those two colors together. So once I'm happy with how those two colors look, now I'm going to grab my bean 
green scene stencil and I'm going to use vintage photo to add some brown to my card. So I put that stencil on top of my cardstock. I'm grabbing that tape just to help me keep that stencil in place. And then I'm gonna go with a very light touch and add some of this vintage photo distress oxide on top of the stencil and on top of my orange and yellow background. I wanted this to give a look of coffee beans in my background. Uh, this will be the inside of my shaker, so it's also just adding a little bit more of an element inside of the shaker. Now I'm going to add a little bit of splatter. I have a white ink pen that I'm just putting onto a small piece of scrap acetate and I'm grabbing a fine, to, or a fine brush to um, splatter that onto my background. And then I also did vintage photo in distress ink and I added some water and splattered that to my background as well. So while that's drying, we'll move on to our next part of the card, which is our die cut. So I'm just going to grab that coffee lid and sleeve from my uh, die cuts that I had from showing you the different pieces earlier. And then I die cut the lid out of some white cardstock as well. I'm grabbing vintage photo again to add some distress to my little coffee sleeve. And then I'm going to grab the color antique linen to color and add some cream to my coffee lid. Um, so I was intentionally trying to make it look like a white coffee lid with a little bit of shadow, but later on I will just completely cover the lid with this Distress Oxide because I needed more of a contrast in the final card. So I will bring this color back out, but for now I was just trying to create some shadow onto my lid using that antique linen. I grabbed my little glue bert and I am gluing the lid together. So I have that lid piece on top of the whole entire cap of the coffee cup. And I, I, like I said, glued those together. So I will set those aside to dry. Now I want to add a sentiment to my card. So I'm grabbing the new stamp set called Tea Time Sentiment Stamps. And I decide to go with the Powered by Caffeine and Chaos. I thought that would be really cute for this coffee cup with shaker element inside of it. So I grab my Misty and I'm using Versifying Claire in Pinecone, which is a brown ink to stamp on my sentiment. So I'm doing my best to get that centered onto my little coffee sleeve and then I will ink it up and stamp it down. I really like using this type of ink for my sentiments. I know I'm gonna get a nice, clean, crisp stamp the first time. So I have my sentiment done and I have all my die cuts ready. So let's start assembling our shaker. So I'm taking my first uh, die cut piece and I'm going to add some double sided adhesive. So I'm adding a 1 8 inch on the top and bottom just because of the room uh, in between the die cut coffee cup and the rectangle. And then I used a quarter inch to cover everything else. So I uh, just use what you have on hand. This is going to be adhering to the acetate and is not involved with the shaker pieces. So you don't need to worry about it being um, completely covered with adhesive, just enough to make sure that it will stick to your acetate. So I'm going to peel off all of the release paper from this adhesive and then I'm going to lay my A2 size piece of acetate right onto the background. I actually cut it a tiny bit smaller than A2 so I didn't have to worry about lining it up perfectly. I'm going to grab some of my three millimeter deep foam tape and I'm going to use the five millimeter wide to add some foam adhesive to create my shaker. So I'm lining it up and fitting it in around my shaker. So I have some on the top and on the bottom. And then once I fill in the sides, I'm going to do two pieces. So I'm going to do one that fits and kind of wraps around the edge of the coffee cup because I want my shaker to just be where the coffee cup is and not the whole card. And then I will add some extra foam behind my cardstock here because I want to make sure that it is nice and stable when I place it onto a card base. So again, using my foam to perfectly lock in my shaker bits. You don't want to make sure that there are any openings or they're just going to fall right out of your shaker, but I still want to make sure I'm placing foam along the edge of my card so it's nice and stable when I glue the background together. 
So now that my foam adhesive is attached, I'm going to peel off all of the release paper and then I'm going to grab my sparkle mix. So I'm using the pumpkin spice sparkle mix, of course, as my theme is a pumpkin spice latte. And I'm going to pour in, I think, probably almost half the packet because this is a really large shaker card. You don't want to overdo your shaker, but this is a really large shaker. So I think I used about half the pack, but you can definitely use just a little bit. You could use some of the die cuts like the hearts to add in more to the background. Uh, just fill it to your heart's content. <laughs> So I have two pieces that are exactly the same size and I want to make sure they line up perfectly. So I'm going to use my Misty with, uh, I removed the black foam from in there and I'm just sliding it into that bottom left hand corner and then sliding my background into that bottom left hand corner as well and just using the edges inside my Misty to help me line them up. And there we have our pumpkin spice shaker. So now that that's done, we're going to add in our extra pieces. So here you can see that my lid blends in too much with the background. I wanted a white, I guess, foreground for this card because I wanted everything to be bright inside of the shaker. So I added more of that antique linen like I explained earlier and now I feel like the lid pops up more out of the background and doesn't get lost. I'm adding some glue from my Gluebert to glue that inside of the die cut so I have my lid and then I'm going to adhere on my coffee sleeve with the sentiment and this time I'm going to use some really thin foam adhesive. I love my heavy foam adhesive but it does make the card a little thick and I didn't want to add more thickness to my card so I use some really thin foam adhesive to glue that down. And you can come you know, just stop making the card here. This would be a really cute fall themed card, but I love Halloween and I want to add in some of the touches using some of the new stamps from Heffy Doodle. So I stamped two little pumpkins from the Perfect Blend stamp set and then two pumpkins, one of them with a ghost from the Ghoul Friend stamp set. And I stamped them in a black alcohol marker friendly ink onto some alcohol marker friendly cardstock from Heffy Doodle. I die cut them with my little mini machine and then I used some Heffy tape to keep those dies in place but also to be behind my white cardstock. So my images are already die cut but this will just help me keep them in place while I color. So now I'm gonna use some oranges to color in my pumpkins. I'm gonna quickly go through my coloring as the video was more to show you how to use the dyes for this set, but I still wanted to show you a little bit of coloring. So my pumpkins are orange and I use brown to color in the stems of the pumpkins. And then for my ghost, I'm using a light brown gray just to add in a little bit of shadow detail. And then I will use a colorless blender to blend that out and soften it up. And then of course, every cute little critter or ghost needs cute little pink cheeks. So I grabbed a blush to add those. And then I have a white gel pen to add in some highlights in various spots around my images. And that's just some nice quick coloring. I wanted my ghost to kind of have a shimmery look to it. So I use my clear Wink of Stella, which is a glitter pen to add a little bit of shine to that ghost. So now I peeled off all of my pieces and I'm just going to layer them along the bottom just to add a little bit of fun to the card and give it some Halloween uh, pumpkin fun. So that will be my layout. I'm going to use my Gluebert to adhere down the pumpkin on the left as well as my pumpkin with the little ghost. And then I am going to use two again of those thinner foam square adhesives behind my two little mini pumpkins and add those down to overlap with the pumpkins I glued down with my Gluebert. And that will finish off my card. I will add this to a card base um, off camera. I realized after I was done filming that I forgot to add a card base, but I'm just going to use a top folding A2 card base, which is my favorite type of fold. Here is a final look at this fun pumpkin spice shaker card. I hope you learned more on how to use this brand new die set and that you have a lot of fun creating coffee and tea type cards this season. You can find a list of everything I use down below and don't forget to find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and more. Have a great day.